Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today for episode 4 of 5 on light. We've talked about how it affects humans, we've talked about what it is, we've talked about how we observe it and how our brains process it a little bit, but mostly we've talked about what the electromagnetic spectrum is. So make sure you check out those episodes also. This is episode 4 of 5, and we're going to talk about the speed of light. You can't talk about light and not talk about the speed of light. It's probably one of the most famous concepts in physics. Why? Because it's so important. The speed of light tells us so much about our universe, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, the speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second in a vacuum, about a billion kilometers an hour, roughly, or 186,000 miles per second. Any particle with zero mass and without acceleration moves at the speed of light in a vacuum. So when a match is lit, the light doesn't like pick up speed really fast and get up to the speed of light really fast, you know, like an accelerating car. Instead, it's like portal. It's instantaneous, you know. When the match is lit, the light is instantly moving at the speed of light. There is no delay. The instant it starts, speed of light. Nobody knows why this is, that's just the way it is. And there's a reason that scientists put such an emphasis on the speed of light. And this is a tough one, but I think we can get through this. Imagine you're on a moving train and you jump off the front of the train. So you're going, say, 70 miles an hour and you jump off of it. To you, you're jumping, you know, three, five feet or whatever. To someone watching, you've jumped the distance that the train has traveled in that time plus the three feet during your super sweet jump. And you, as a logical human being in your own right, believe, okay, there are two different observers, two different perspectives. It's, you know, completely different perspectives, but it's the same jump. No big deal. Einstein's all like, na, na, na. The speed of light is constant, no matter the observer. So if instead of jumping, you flicked on a flashlight, the light isn't going faster because it's not going, you know, the speed of light plus the speed of the train. That's not how it works. It's only going the speed of light. If that train was somehow going 100,000 miles per second, the light wouldn't be going 286,000 miles per second. It would only be going 186,000 miles per second, which is confounding to a lot of people. But that's how the universe works. The speed of light is the ultimate speed limit. The universe is interconnected. So things that happen in point A affect point B. If something blows up, a supernova in a distant galaxy, it shouldn't kill us instantly. It takes time to get to us, right? And the reason it takes time is because the universe has an ultimate speed limit, the speed of light. The speed of light means that even if a supernova explodes, it will take time to dissipate through the universe. Actions in our universe are happening at specific maximums, no matter where you observe them from. The universe doesn't have to act like that. It doesn't have to do that. But the speed of light is the max, period. We're not sure why it's the max, but it is. And every equation in modern physics has these assumptions at its core, and they've all worked out. The math and the observations in the universe all seem to agree the speed of light is tops, which is crazy completely. Like, why would that be the top? No idea. No idea. That's the cosmic speed limit. The reason that's important to know is because if you know the speed limit of light, the constant top speed of the universe, then you can find out all sorts of things, like how far away stars are, how far away that supernova was, because you know how long it took to get to you based on light years, the amount of distance that can be covered by light in a year. According to the theory of special relativity, anything that exceeds the speed of light, if that were even possible, would like technically travel backwards in time or something. Like I don't even completely understand it, but it's impossible to move faster than the speed of light. As you get closer and closer to the speed of light, like let's say you built a spaceship and you were flying out there and you wanted to go to the speed of light, so you start ramping up. As you get closer and closer to the speed of light in your little spaceship, time gets slower compared to a stationary observer. You know, remember the movie Interstellar? He didn't really age that much, but outside of that spaceship, outside of the gravity wells, things were moving really fast. If you could travel at the speed of light, theoretically, time, would like stop. You're simply moving infinitely faster than everything around you. Think of it like a video game thing. 
No amount of frames, no FPS can update as fast as you'd be moving around, right? You'd be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. But we can't move at the speed of light. Einstein figured all this out when he asked himself this question, why can't we go faster than the speed of light? He tried to figure it out and then he was like, you know what, that whole question is nonsensical because we can't do it because it's an exponential increase in energy as you get closer to the speed of light. The important thing is that he asked that question. He was like, why? How does this work? What's going on? And then, of course, all of our brains exploded, and even Einstein was like, you know what? Don't worry about it. We can't go faster than the speed of light anyway. Why the speed of light matters is because we want to be able to understand the world around us, and we needed to know when things weren't moving just as much as we needed to know when they were and how fast they could move. Astrophysicists have recently discovered a gas and dust cloud in two distant exploding stars that is moving at 99.9997% the speed of light. That's 894 meters per second, shy of the speed of light. That's not that much slower. The energy required to move these little bits of dust is nearly infinite. Because as Einstein said, the faster an object moves, the exponentially larger amount of energy is needed to speed it up. It just gets harder and harder and harder to move it faster. So if it's going 99.9997% the speed of light, it's essentially taking almost infinite energy to keep it going. And that's insane. But this is what astrophysicists have to deal with. And if they didn't know the speed of light, they wouldn't know that about the energy required. It's kind of like the key to unlocking all of these different things in the universe. But light doesn't always have to travel the speed of light. The speed of light is a constant. But we humans can mess with it. We'll talk about that tomorrow here on Test 2 Plus. So make sure you subscribe. You can click here on the screen to do that. Make sure you come back here for our final episode in this series about how we've stopped light. It's going to be pretty cool. Let us know down in the comments if you know a little bit more about special relativity than us or if you have other questions about science that you want us to try and answer on future episodes. Come say hey to me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. You can also find the show at TestTube. And we'll see you tomorrow on TestTube+. Plus. <laughs>